It's fall 2014, and we're here with another spectacular 6131 final project. Katie, go ahead, introduce yourself and tell us what you made. Hi, my name is Katie, and uh, the concept behind my project was to make a boot heater for your ski boot that can heat wirelessly, so you don't have to have any wires protruding from your boot. So in order to do this, I decided to use induction heating. And as well as um, creating an induction heater for my ski boot, I decided to explore um, a way of building an induction heater so that it's self-resident to get past the problems that we saw in lab three. So in lab That's with the fluorescent lamp, yeah, where you had to tune the control yourself, right? Yeah, so the, uh, in lab three, what we did was we built a fluorescent lamp ballast, and we had to run it at residence in order to get the proper strike voltage. In order to do that, we had to use a controller, and then we had to uh, use a pot to choose um, the frequency input into it, and that way we could uh, reach this. We had like to look at the scope probe and see that we were hitting the actual resonance. Uh, before we could attach to our circuit. But with this, um, that would be kind of a problem because not only do you, like small environmental factors tend to very slightly maybe tweak what the resonant frequency of your circuit is, um, but also once you add a load, here I'll show the circuit. Once you add a load to um, the uh, coil. So that load is like the, is the a metal heater in yeah. your boot, right? So okay. once you add this to it, it would actually change what the resonant frequency of your circuit is. And the way my circuit works, it will automatically find that point and operate at that point to maximize the current going through it. Uh, the way an induction heater works is basically you um, have an alternating current going through a coil um, of coil of wire and that creates a switching magnetic field and then once you get another piece of metal near it, it um, the switching magnetic field induces eddy currents and that um, traveling through the metal is resistive and so it heats up that way as well as it has um, it's a ferromagnetic material so it's got um, magnetic filaments that will switch back and forth rapidly which also heats it up. Um, so, so that's both eddy current and hysteresis losses yeah. you got them both going for you. Um, so the way my circuit works is actually pretty cool. Um, it's very, very simple. Like this is the entirety of the circuit. This is for a buck converter that was separate. But here's the entirety of my circuit basically. And it, um, the way it works is you don't have any drivers or anything driving the MOSFET gates. Instead, um, what you do is all of the, this, this voltage right here, we, I set it to 12 volts, is basically um, just like the DC input, but then this right here is where the power is actually coming from. So that first, this is actually the gate drive, basically, yeah. right, voltage, okay. So basically what happens is um, you have a voltage across and one of these FETs will turn on and um, the diodes basically control which way the current can flow. So um, it'll pull the current from L2 to actually power the circuit and it will start ramping up the resonance in the loop. And um, it operates at its resonant point because it's like its natural response. And um, at the point where it crosses zero, the diodes will switch which one is on and which one is off, which will turn whether or not these gate drivers are on. Uh, which, which one which, of them is on. Which, right. Yeah, which right. one of the gates is on. And so it actually operates at its resonance point. So it's only pulling like two amps from the actual uh, power source, but it gets like 10 amps ramping through this loop, right. which maximizes how hot this thing can get. Cool. Outstanding. You want to show us? Yeah, totally. Okay. Um, so I have it so that there's a piece of uh, the space in between that's supposed to be like the heel of your boot, the sole of your boot. So I'm going to put this on top right here. And uh, okay, I'm going to turn on the power source. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but it's actually in the audible frequency. So that's kind of annoying, but I mean, if I were to make this into a real product, I would get rid of that. But well, it's no, actually it's kind of cool, cool actually. You because know, when right. you add the load, you can actually hear it decrease in frequency. Right. And you've so. covered this with a thermal paint yeah, that's turning it, white, it turns white as it gets hot, it gets hot right? Yeah. So we know it's getting hot because we see the cool message. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely spectacular. Totally cool. Yeah, and but if you leave it on for like 45 seconds or so, it gets like really pretty hot. Like right now is not too warm, but in about 45 seconds, it's gonna be to the point where you can't leave it on your finger for right. more than a second without it burning your hand. Let me pull back. So that's pretty awesome. That is spectacular. Congratulations, nice job. Thank you.